So when printing any part, the very first thing you have to think about is the very first layer. In this video, we're going to talk about how to design the first layer to make sure that it is reliable and is able to mass produce a part with the minimum number of errors possible. So in order to set the stage, we made the worst possible first layer in the world. This layer is terrible for a number of different reasons. Number one, it has those triangular holes. Not only are they sharp and have sharp corners, which can create all sorts of deformation on the first layer, they actually don't have to be here. These holes in this case are cosmetic. If you have cosmetic holes or features, rather than sending them all the way through the part, instead embed them. This creates a nice flesh lower surface and you no longer have those holes, which can potentially be deformed and warped on the first layer. And then have the holes come out the top the way you want them to. They still look the same, but the first layer is way more uniform and doesn't have this additional detail that's not necessary. The next thing that is also absolutely horrible is this text on the bottom. You never want to put text on the bottom of an FDM part because the first layer will squash it and deform it or it will drag. And all of those very small features are very tough to get nailed down on the first layer because they may not be deposited just precisely. If you have to have text on a part, I recommend watching this video where we go through all the details of how text should be made. Put it on the side, put it inside, put it on top, put it somewhere else, but don't ever put it on the first layer. It overcomplicates it and makes it really difficult to print reliably and can actually cause a failure of the entire part in an extreme circumstance. This raises the cost of your parts over mass production and definitely increases the amount of waste. But now finally, we have the outer edges of this part. This part has no rounded corners. This is very difficult on a first layer because the nozzle will go to the tip of one of these corners and then has to radically change direction. Not only does this slightly increase print time because it has basically a full stop and then it reaccelerates again, but it can also again cause a failure because that corner which has so little contact area with the actual print bed can drag backwards and cause deformation or warp. So what you can do with this is just round out the corners a little bit, but do the maximum amount possible. The largest fillet you're able to place on a corner do it. If you can do one millimeter, that's fine. If you can go up to five or 10, do that. Take this down to a round blob. The rounder and smoother and more circular the first layer is, the better. So let's just go ahead and take that all the way to the extreme. We've taken this star shape that is absolutely horrible to print and blended it all down to just a circle. Now you have no corners at all. This is a really nice first layer. And you can see that the bottom of it is all now uniform and very smooth. But the problem is with really large flat surfaces like that, now you start running into another problem. As that first layer is pressed against the bed, depending on the materials and the situations and its design of the part, you can end up with these types of artifacts. These are basically small deformations from one line of material pressing up against another one, causing not really a warp, but just a weirdness in it. So in order to fix this issue, rather than having large, broad surfaces on the base of the part, you can actually minimize them down. In the case of the circle, you can actually do this. Basically cut out a cone in the bottom so that now you have just a small outer ring. That outer ring can be as wide as you need it to be. Depending on the material, again, you may need a certain amount of bed adhesion in order to make sure that the part is stable and secure, but you want to minimize the contact as much as possible because this enables auto ejection down the line. So you have a more highly automated part, which means that now you can make millions of them without high cost. And you also eliminate the surface defect feature or the possibility of it occurring. Ideally, if you're doing something with something easy like PLA, you can take it all the way down to one millimeter. Now the surface layer is stable, it is reliable, it has no sharp corners, it has no text, but it has a good contact surface with the bed without a large contact surface that can be warped and deformed. This right here is the very perfect first layer because it minimizes the amount of stuff that is out of your control. So you no longer have weird deformation that can occur from having to try to keep text or other sort of features tight and refined on the first layer. Ultimately, what we're going for is the simplest first layer that you can possibly make. Round it out, eliminate extraneous features. If you have holes all the way through, plug them off if possible. And if you have any other need for any sort of weird feature, just try to push it up as far as you can away from the first layer where the machine has more control and it's not about the flow characteristics from a nozzle onto a flat surface. The first layer is so important because if it goes wrong, the rest of the part could go wrong. And whenever we're quoting jobs, we will generally give feedback on the first layer. But if we're starting with this, there's a lot of feedback to have to be given. 
good. And if for some reason you're not able to round it down and you do have to have sharp corners like this, we have a whole video about brims where we talk about how to actually do brims for these types of features. And I recommend you go check that out. Have a great day, everybody.